You may already know that Skyhoy produces universal broadcast interfaces. We do a lot of PTC control for robotic cameras, but also RCP control for studio cameras and POV cameras and so forth. But we actually started controlling video switches. And in this video, I am very happy to formally introduce the TriCaster series for Skyhoy controllers. So we'll look at the TC1 TriCaster, but we also have a TriCaster Mini, which is a smaller version, which um, can do exactly the same things that we'll be looking at in this video. So the TriCasters, they already have interfaces. They have great control panels with lots of colorful buttons, and I always think they look impressive and probably are great working with. So what you may want is sometimes a smaller panel than these really are big and colorful and powerful panels. And that's why I want to introduce the LiveFly controller from Skyhoy to you today, because in this panel you have a lot of features packed into really just a, a few buttons. This is the LiveFly panel and it's really amazing what has been put into this small compact panel for the TriCaster. This is the LiveFly panel. Right here, it's connected with an Ethernet cable to my network. It has power over Ethernet, so the switch it's connected to is sending not only signals forth and back, but also the power for the panel. Single cable solution, and I love it. Over here, we have the TC1 and also the TriCaster Mini. So it's the TC1 that's currently connected, and in this video, you'll also see the multi-viewer from the TC1 as we work with the functions of the panel. But let's go right to the LiveFly and see what it can do. So on the LiveFly panel, we have multiple different states of the panel and we can change them by using this button. So we now go to a different stage with different features accessible on these buttons. If I press again, you see it's different set of features. If I press again, different set and so forth. We'll walk through these different states one by one so you can see what it's all about. So this is the default state and it's called the ME state. So in this state, we'll work with the different MEs in the TriCaster. So we have four, no, actually five MEs. We have the main ME, which is zero. And then as I press this button, you see I'm going to ME1, ME2, ME3, and ME4. And which ME I'm on is actually reflected in these displays. I hope you can see it on the video. It says ME4 preview program. And when I, I'm now here, it says main preview program it says me one preview program so what does me uh, sorry preview program mean anyway it means that the way we like to use a single row of buttons for selecting sources on a video switcher is typically to give you access to the preview so you see as i'm pushing this button i am uh, changing the preview source and uh, actually if i press and hold it will make a cut as well. But of course, the idea is that you make the cut with the cut button over here. So as you press the cut button, you see the cut happening. And if I press the audio button, I see an auto transition happening. Now that was ME1, two, three, and four. So I have access to these things. But let me show you what happens with the shift key. And with the shift key, I'm able to select different sources here. So if I press it once, I have now access to source 9 and up to 16 and DDR2. If I press again, I have buffer from 1 up to 8 and graphics. I have now buffer 9 to 16, black and graphics. And you know what happens if I press the other side of the shift key, it's actually going back. So this is such a great example of four-way buttons. You'll see in this controller, we have a lot of four-way button functionality. And in short, a four-way button is a button that will detect presses on either side of the button. So the upper, lower, left or right edge. And on a controller like this one, the shift key has been uh, set up to uh, exhibit its four-way button features. Likewise, we do it for the um, uh, user keys U1 and U2. They are also configured for that. In fact, all the buttons on this panel are four-way buttons, but we only use it on a select few keys because what good would it 
actually bring to have four-way button functionality on the uh, program preview row. So just to, to recap, this button is not a, well, it is a four-way button technically, but it is just set up to do no matter which edge I'm pressing, it is selecting a source to preview and that's it. Let's go back to uh, this. So the shift key will typically let us go forth and back, forth and back, again, notice this. The idea is that I'm browsing forth and back through different shift levels, as we like to put it. So if I go up here in the menu, uh, or oh sorry, the ME row, you see the, the same thing. In fact, we have also introduced more than just left and right presses. If I press the lower edge, it will go back to ME1. You'll also see something else. If you look in the TriCaster multi-viewer, you can see as I repeatedly press the lower edge on the ME selector, I am changing whether or not we see the ME pane. And the ME pane uh, is actually a, a, a trigger we are sending to the TriCaster that does this. But um, that's the lower edge of the button. And of course, if you see this pane and now I'm, I'm browsing the ME's, you also see that this pane will reflect the ME's that I am uh, going to. Okay. Now, let's go back and look what else we have. So these were input selections, yes. And uh, over here, I have uh, buttons for my downstream keys. Now, let's try to press. Uh, first of all, these keys are also determined by my shift level. Um, so, uh, let me see. If I go to, you can see here, I have ME1 downstream key, ME2 downstream key, ME3 downstream key, ME4 downstream key. Yes, so this, re uh, this depends on my ME selected over here. Of course it does. Now, if I press the lower edge, you see that I'm basically taking the downstream key on and off. You see? But let's take one of these that you can, like this one. Okay, this one is a good example. I'm now pressing the upper edge of the key and you can see we have set up the upper edge to act slightly different by creating an auto transition. So this button is also a four-way button, has been set up lower edge, it's a take, upper edge, it's an auto transition or mixed transition for that. Okay, so um, over here we have something called output, uh, which we can select different outputs, uh, forth and back. I'll get back to the next tab, uh, sorry. And um, on the next uh, level of the menu, and this one will bring up tabs in the lower part of the interface. So if I press it, it says graphics one, and I bring up that tab, if I use the shift key, I now bring up graphics 2. And if I press again, you'll see I bring up DDR1. And if I press again, it's DDR2 that I'm bringing up using this tab. Over here, I can select sources for my uh, downstream keys. And uh, this is an encoder. You can also see that in the interface, I'm changing which source I have on downstream key 2. And over here, I have uh, master volume selection. I want to show you that later, so let's just move on to the next menu. On the next menu, it's called output. On this menu, we are selecting output. So uh, the TriCaster has uh, a number of outputs, and I can delegate which sources are going to those outputs. That's the purpose of the next menu level on uh, the, the live fly. And uh, the output number is selected or shown in, um, in this display. And as I'm pressing this button, I'm changing which output I'm delegating to. This is always clear from the title of the graphics for any of these buttons. So now I'm at output three, yes, but I can also see that it says mix three right there. So I know that if I'm pressing this button, uh, sorry, that did not work for whatever reason. Uh, but this one mix three, 16, uh, uh, input 16 is uh, sent to that, uh, 12 and so forth. It's, it's reflected right there. Um, again, if I'm, if I'm using my shift key, I can go forth and back between uh, all the outputs. So it's really not a problem that you don't have access to um, dedicated buttons for every single output because you have this paging functionality built into the shift key. And um, that's one way to make a small panel like this so flexible and powerful as we have done in this example. 
So uh, that was the four outputs. I can select like that. Now, uh, we did also put it into an encoder just to show you that we can actually, um, if I'm, as I'm turning the encoder, you can see I'm just browsing through sources using the encoder like, like this. That's an, al an alternative to uh, what the dedicated buttons will otherwise do. Let's go to the next menu. This is the sound menu. And now it becomes really exciting. So again, the four-way buttons will so much shine on this because you don't see any faders, do you? You also see only two encoders. And how are you gonna adjust audio with so little um, uh, hardware components on a panel like this? Again, four-way buttons will be your friend. And let's look at how that actually works. And so now again, let's uh, see what happens when I'm pressing um, the, the shift key here. You can see I'm browsing through different options up here. And down here, I have uh, input. Now uh, the, the various inputs are shown on the lower row. Uh, but in the upper row, I have input 1 to 6, 7 up to 14. And when I press here, I have access to uh, DDR1, DDR2, sound effects, auxiliary 1 and auxiliary 2. Over here we have uh, audio adjustments for phones and master. Now let's go back to, no, let's just adjust the audio for DDR1. So the moment I do that, you'll see that in the multi-viewer, we also trigger a macro, a sender trigger, so that we'll see now the audio adjustment um, pane. And as I am pressing this repeatedly, we should see a fader move. And you see more or less there in the middle of the picture, you see a fader move to 20 dB. And now I'm pressing and holding the key and it is actually moving down. And that's how you can adjust audio sources for, yeah, basically all these sources that you see. So let's try this one. This would be input number seven that I'm now turning up. You see, and now I'm turning it down again. Input number seven, you always see what value it's at in the display, such a cool feature. And of course, we have adjustment of uh, phones over here. You see that's the second last fader. And then, of course, the master volume uh, can be adjusted using this knob. OK, so you can really break out certain things onto encoders if you're more comfortable with that. Like you also saw the master volume included in some of the other menus. But in this interface, the four-way buttons will give you access to any audio source. But it doesn't even stop there because sometimes you want to mute uh, sources, just turn on and off whether or not they are active or not. And that's what this key will do for you. So the mute key really brings us into a new state where we can enable and disable sources. The way you see it in the interface is whether the fader is blue just below it or if it's not. So now I'm turning off many of these DDR uh, sound auxiliary one and auxiliary two. And you can see in the interface how they are now grayed out instead of being blue. Now I'm turning them on again. And that's essentially what you do in this interface. Let's move on to the next one. So here we have macros. And again, uh, depending on the shift level you're at, you can see we have macros one up to 15, or we can go from 16 up to 30. And um, yeah, so these triggers, let's see what happens if I press some of these triggers. You can see that that will have effects, certain effects uh, in the TriCaster. So essentially we are just when we are um, with these macros, we are sending triggers over to TriCaster and in TriCaster you uh, decide what to do with these um, pulses that you send over. So that's very useful and also uh, the way that we control certain features that you see in this demo. If we move on to the next one, you have the, re the recording tab. Now, um, in this case, only a certain part of the interface changes because down here we have the program preview row that corresponds 100% to what happens if you are in the ME section. So in the ME section, you have this. If you go back to the recording section, only this one, this part up here uh, changes. So this is really just falling back to the default behavior. And um, we have start, stop recording, start, chop and streaming and let's just start recording you can see that we started recording in the upper um, part of the multi-viewer you see this clearly and uh, when i press the chop i can uh, do something like uh, introduce a new recording uh, like you know make a new file as far as i understand streaming is something you can try starting uh, it is currently not streaming it's trying to stream but it will fail because we have not set the system up to actually stream anywhere but um, you see the function can be triggered from here. And then we have um, a function to grab stills. 
So when I press this button, you see a slight indication that it's going to grab a still frame from my otherwise pretty boring input, which um, I'm sorry about, but <laughs> that's all we have as a, as a talent. That's really this stupid plastic flower. Then uh, we also have buttons for picture and picture, left, picture and picture, right. And um, that kind of concludes the last menu with the recording. So it found its way in with the picture and picture as well. Oh yeah, okay. So we also have panel brightness, which is not on a clear day like today, you won't need it. But really, if you are in a very dark control room, you may enjoy being able to dim down the whole panel. That's a standard feature. It has nothing to do with the TriCaster device core. And, uh, but we just build it into this panel. You can do that. Uh, you can remove it if, if you don't like it, or you can add it if you have a controller where we didn't put it in by default. <sighs> that was a lot of ground to cover for the TriCaster switches. We are very excited about this panel. And actually, you, you may think, hmm, the reason for having a small panel was really to just cut down on the functionality. So why would I want to have tons of shift levels and states and menus and my user can get lost in this? Okay, to be fair, I just want to show you how much we can do. You can always peel away layers of functionality, simply removing it out of the configuration of our controllers. And if you're interested in seeing how to con configure our controllers, we have a lot of videos online and you can, um, you can from those videos understand that the same principles applies. So this controller has a web interface. In this web interface, you will see all this functionality as drop down boxes. And if you don't like it, if you want to peel some of that away to make a simple, very user friendly and limited panel configuration, no problem at all. If you want us to help you doing that, we can probably do so. We are looking forward to feedback from TriCaster users all over the world. So please mail us if you have feedback, if you, if you want to contribute configurations, or if you're just generally excited about what we're doing. So it works on the TC1, it works on the TriCaster Mini, and um, we, um, yeah, we're excited to, to bring this to the market and hear from all you TriCaster users out there uh, how you like it. Let's get this